Welcome to the Distant Education Department of the National Law School of India University. Uh, this is a video uh, to give an idea to all our distant education scholars about how to approach distant education examination of uh, the National Law School of India University. National Law School of India University, we actually tended to throw our exams, test uh, the understanding of law and not the memory of uh, yours. Often I come across a question through my distance uh, education students whether it is necessary for them to quote exact sections or verbatimly reproduce those sections. I always try to tell them because our mandate or our approach is to test your understanding of law and not the memory of yours, we do not expect that. However, it is very important for you to re-articulate the intent of law, the content of law and also if possible the object of law while developing your answers. But you all know it is very important that you have to mentally prepare yourself for the exams. One is the management of time when you actually go to write your exams. It may be because of few things. The first one is maybe you must have left writing examination as a habit long long ago because we have scholars ranging from just 24 years to about 84 years. Because of that, I always say it is better you actually try to focus upon your question paper and try to really see how much of question, how many questions you have to answer at what amount of time. And that would roughly give you kind of allocation, kind of individual allocation you have. Let us for instance say you have 20 minutes to write an answer for a question. At that time it is very important for you to say to yourself the entire 20 minutes is not expected of you to really you know write. It is pro probably you know you require to use about 60% of this 20 minutes or little more than that to be used leaving aside about 10 minutes you know about 10% of your time to really chalk out or really write it out how you want to develop your uh, answers. That is very important. First try to do some kind of mind mapping. Write to jot down those uh, you know contents of your answer which you are trying to uh, reflect. So this you can use 10 minutes, you know 10% of your total allocated time and remaining 10% of the time you may probably wish to allocate for the purpose of uh, you know, re-verifying whether you have written whatever is expected of uh, you to be written as an answer. So, remaining 80% you can leisurely try to, you know, spread and to develop your answers. This is one very important, uh, you know, aspect which I wish to bring to all the scholars' notice. The second, after time management, the second very important thing according to me is to have, you know, answer developed through visible paragraphs because we come across a lot of answer strips where we could not able to really make out what you know where from the answer starts and where the scholar you know goes to that is why we would like you know some visible you know paragraphs to be made so that it becomes easy for evaluator to really understand how the answer is being developed step by step the last one is Law is a discipline which has developed through precedence. 
so quoting of some appropriate decisional law is rather must even if you had gone through our uh, carefully developed reading materials we have uh, you know sprinkled we have put lot of emphasis upon the case laws those case laws if you can bring to support your arguments that would be the best way to develop your answers so once again if i may reiterate one is the time management you have to really you know develop sort of a sense to you know manage your time when you are sitting inside the examination hall attempting to write answers second one is be very cogent legible and make your answers develop through a very very visible you know paragraphs and the last one is you have to bring lot of an appropriate case law to your you know answer which this i think uh, you know this is my input for the examiners and i use this opportunity to wish all of you best of luck for your exams examination pattern will have to be divided into the masters of business law examination as well as the diploma examinations nevertheless as we find the questions in relation to law i think there are certain important steps that uh, the candidate is expected to follow one of the first suggestions to every candidate is to read the instructions in the question paper up front the instructions will very clearly tell you what the examiner would be expecting from the question paper and how it should be answered generally questions could be of broadly two categories one problem based questions other theory or straight forward questions which may have certain answers expected on the questions itself as a majority of our distant education scholars are from the non law background 
we generally observe that the questions have very general answers without any legal analysis or any legal reasoning present in those answers and hence it is expected that this candidate reads the distant education material very carefully looks at the proposition and analysis of the law laid down in the reading material and goes about preparation for the examination it is important that uh, the candidate does not solely rely on the reading material supplied by the distant education department national law school of india university candidates kindly note there are additional supplementary reading material suggested both in the handbook that is given to you and also in each of the reading material at the end of either the module or the reading material itself the idea of the suggested reading is that the candidate must and in all circumstances take additional reading before he appears for the examination the examination content is uh, for 3 hours the candidate must have proper time management he must utilize those 3 hours in uh, answering the questions as far as possible as some of our dd scholars are senior students we request you to write legibly wherever possible please follow a few uh, skills of examination like for example you can highlight cases that you have answered in the examination you can underline some of the important points sections principles thereby giving the examiner examination uh, evaluator sorry a clue about uh, what is the emphasis of your answer in those papers try and uh, go through the old question papers that is uploaded on pupil pod kindly refer to the key answers that has been provided by the examiner also try and analyze the questions as detailedly as possible while we emphasize that the quality of the answers must be up to the mark you also ought to look at the quantity which clearly shows how substantially you have answered the question because any answer in brief is not an answer as equivalent to the marks allotted to that question so kindly reflect to the marks allotted to the question thereby improve the quality as well as the quantity of your answers we also request the candidates to contact the distant education department either through email or the phone number and kindly rely on the website for the final result declaration these are certain broad guidelines that we would want to give as a preparation for any distant education examination let me now invite professor arpita the assistant coordinator and assistant professor of law at the distant education department to add on and continue with the, this deliberation on the examination preparation friends when professor but uh did get mention about you know certain things that you have to keep in mind when you talk about examination i would want to go a little further you know on talking about when you write an examination things that you have to be concerned about the first thing that comes on to my mind is you know with regard to mal practice we see that over the past 2 years we've seen a lot of mal practice cases happening or coming into consideration when you talk about either a delhi center or a bangalore center so i think this is uh, something that we have seriously taken note of and uh, we are very stringent on you know accepting such kind of uh, delinquent behaviors here as well so the first thing that uh, we would want to make mention is please do not carry anything a kind of sheet of paper or any kind of an electronic gadget that uh, we do not allow at all so we would request all of you to please you know i we understand that you're mostly working professionals so you would want to carry your electronic gadgets but at the end of the day we, we must realize that you know as a student you will be writing a paper so please keep in mind that electronic gadgets of any kind will not be permitted inside the examination hall uh, 
uh, sometimes we, we also see that a lot of you uh, tend to, you know, not realize that you know, writing a name on your answer script also matters a lot for us when we think of evaluation. Sometimes we also see a lot of you writing you know, uh, God's names like Saira or something like that. Friends, you know, to take it on a lighter note, you must uh, also realize that you know, an evaluator gets your paper and on the top, if in case I see somebody has written Om Saira. So I might you know, probably think, probably you want to convey something to Professor Sairam but So we do not want to have such kind of an instances where it might create a lot of problems for the examiner, for the student themselves and for the coordinator also. So I think you will only have to mention your ID number very specifically. Your ID number should be very clear when you write your the, uh, the ID numbers on your answer script. And uh, uh, we also want to make a mention of this that we have a distance education committee which is headed by the registrar as the chairperson and ex officio members who, who, to whom it would be placed the malpractice cases and whatever decisions that they take will be communicated to you. So I think we are very stringent with the malpractice cases. Uh, I think uh, moving a little further, a lot of times we get uh, you know, queries uh, by emails or phone calls about valuation and revaluation re procedures. The first thing Anybody who scored a 50 mark or above will not be allowed to apply for evaluation. So please keep this in mind. When you normally apply for uh, revaluation, re the procedure is such that an uh, examiner who has evaluated that paper of yours, for example, if it's a contract law paper, if Professor Arpita has evaluated your paper, it will not go to the same examiner for evaluation. Re so you know, we do not have any kind of a biased nature here it will go to a different examiner. Now, uh, when there is a difference of about you know, 15 marks, either more or less, by the first examiner and the second examiner, we would tend to give it to a third examiner for a review. And that is the procedure that we specifically follow for any number of candidates that we have. So once we get these results of the first, second and third examiner, the average of the best of the two examiners will be taken into consideration and the results will be declared. So please keep in mind that you know uh, there is no any uh, any kind of a bias when we talk about uh, the evaluation or the revaluation re procedure. And uh, with regard to the photocopy of answer scripts, most of the times you know you write to us saying I have asked for a photocopy of an answer script. Why no comments on that? So have the, has the evaluator actually read out my answer script? The basic tendency that we tend to follow here is we do not want any kind of a uh, you know biased decision between examiners while they, you know, when, when, if I have to evaluate a paper, I put a tick mark, I put an underline, I might put a wrong. And then when it goes to Professor Sairam or Miss Anita for evaluation, they might tend to get a little biased when they actually see a wrong mark or a ticked mark or an underline mark. So we do not put any kind of comments. However, having said that, you might then wonder, you know, why do I have to take a photocopy of an answer script? We are here as academic counselors to guide you on that. Any time you take a photocopy of, uh, of your answer script, you refer it with your key answer and then you realize that, you know, yes, my answers are somewhere up to the mark with regard to the key answer, but where have I failed? Please write to us, please write to us or the distance education de department inquiring on the same. We will have a look at your answer script and then revert back to you either by telephone or by email. This is something that we thought we should, you know, clear to all of you because we did not want to create any kind of confusions. Now, uh, let me also draw my uh, attention to the diploma students because, you know, dissertation is a part of your syllabus as well, which is a paper 5. Now, when we talk about paper 5, you have 80 marks for the writing of your project and you have 20 marks for your viva. So, project is normally, so your dissertation will have to be submitted one month prior to the date of examination and I hope that all of you have submitted it, those of you who want to write your uh, exams. And with regard to your viva, we do not require any kind of PowerPoint presentations. It is just going to be a one-to-one -one interview between the scholar and the examiner. So please keep in mind. And uh, your vivas will be specifically based on the topic that you have chosen. So I think with this note, uh, I hope I have covered a lot of information that I wanted to give. May I now request uh, Ms. Anita to kindly go forward with her views on it. Hello friends, I am here to tell you how to address the problem based question. Uh, first, let me tell you there is a rule called IREC rule. Uh, IREC, what IREC stand for? I means issue, R means rule, 
and A stand for application and C stand for conclusion. First of all, it is very effective tool to writing the answer because it will save your time management and also effective way to cover all the nuances of the answer. So now coming to the first uh, uh, first uh, uh, like uh, topic, I stand for issue. Please read the question properly. Try to identify what are the issues involved. The moment you are able to identify issue, it will be very easy to find out the rule. Now coming to the second point, rule. In that area, you have to find out what are the rule, what are the provision is applicable based on the issue which you have identified. Now coming to the next point application which is a one of the most important point while addressing the problem based question. In application you have to analyze the rule in the light of the issue which you have framed based on the analysis of the fact. Now the last one coming to the conclusion part. Friends there is a no right, right and wrong conclusion it based upon your analysis. But analysis should be logical. It should be based on the identify issue. It should be based on the rule applicable on the issues. Now moving to the second part. How first thing you have to understand the question properly. You have to understand the nature of the question properly. You must have noticed there are few questions which end with the word critically examine. Explain. Illustrate the statement. In that case, you have to understand the terms, the directives which is used in question. Because the moment examiner used all this directive, it means examiner intends to ask you the answer in particular way. Let me give you one example. Suppose if question include critically examine, it means examiner is expecting you to analyze the questions and to answer the questions in a fair judgment manner. In the sense, you cannot take a one instance, you have to analyze the pros and cons of the answer. So please try to understand the nature of the question before you write. So these are the certain tips which you can utilize and it's also useful for saving your time and it's also effective to answer effectively all the questions. Thank you. I Professor uh, Dr. Ashoka Patil, coordinating PG Diploma in Consumer Law and Practice. Along with that, I am also teaching Insurance Law for MBA students. Uh, I want to give you a little bit information about uh, PG Diploma in Consumer Law and Practice. This diploma is designed by Consumer Chair in consultation with the Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Government of India. And this chair is also established by Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Government of India. And uh, Especially uh, for this particular PG Diploma course, first student is uh, Secretary of Ministry of Consumer Affairs, uh, Mr. Pankaj Agarwal, who sat for this uh, exam and experienced uh, the quality of uh, this particular diploma. And uh, recently, the present Secretary has issued a letter to all Chief Secretaries of uh, all the states to send all members, non-judicial members of uh, district consumer forum for this particular uh, quality course and for this course the fees will be paid by Ministry of Consumer Affairs Government of India to directly to National Law School and whoever clears this particular exam they will get incentive in their salaries also. In this course we are also uh, we are teaching all consumer welfare legislations like uh, Consumer Protection Act Food Safety and Standard Act, Drugs and Cosmetics Act, Legal Metrology Act, Bureau of Indian Standards Act. So like many welfare legislations we are teaching in this course. Also we are teaching on the all the regulatory authorities which are controlling all business uh, uh, these entities, business uh, sectors and also we are uh, discussing on the ombudsmans of a uh, different sector. This course is designed especially for NGOs, laymen, uh, the service providers, manufacturers. So who will get this uh, course benefit? So this uh, course is designed for them. So this is a very good course and uh, reading material will be provided to all the students. Along with that uh, additional materials and updation will be given to them 
so they have to read all these uh, reading materials along with that regular uh, attending the classes so this will make them to clear the this particular course with highest marks so this is about uh, dpg diploma in consumer law and practice about the insurance uh, subject this insurance subject is a very important subject uh, in present scenario and uh, this course uh, every day uh, every individual every business entity is facing lot of uh, risk uh, in day to day uh, business so hence everybody is taking insurance policies uh, like life insurance marine insurance fire insurance health insurance motor vehicle insurance like many so this is uh, that's why this is very important uh, subject uh, for everybody and uh, through 19 uh, ird act 1999 the insurance business privatized after that uh, uh, the insurance regulatory development authority is also established for uh, healthy competition in insurance business and uh, recently another amendment took place insurance laws amendment uh, act uh, 2015 by which uh, the fdi increased from 26% to 49% now there is a boom in insurance sector especially in india and lot of uh, job opportunities are coming in this insurance sector hence everybody should study this subject for their day to day life uh, as well as uh, in their uh, job uh, activities so this is my opinion about the insurance subject thank you friends the idea is to give you uh, a preparatory framework for cracking the distant education examination and hence kindly note the disclaimer is these are only suggestive and not exhaustive you are free to evolve your own strategy you are free to go about preparing your uh, material for the examination on your own and please develop any innovative method that would be useful to actually prepare yourself for the distant education examination finally let me add a few points first of all i think it is important that candidates do not bluff the answers we have often found candidates using their own citations of the cases rather creating the case name while they write the proper case title they write the wrong facts and i think these are fundamental things that should and can be avoided if you do not remember the citation of the case you may simply answer and say in a famous case and thereby narrate the proper facts and the proper ratio of the case and thereby give the proper principle in the judgment as far as possible do not quote wrong sections if you don't remember the section just say as per the provisions of a particular law it is important to be honest in answering the questions and hence that is something that the examiners would want or expect from the candidate also when you say these are law examinations try and relate any question to the law part and when we say law what does this law actually contain it contains sections in a legislative enactment you may quote the section if you remember if not at least tell the content of the section after which i think it is important to look at case law cases that are decided by the supreme court of india by various high courts there could be cases from different other jurisdictions and hence cases add up to the discussion of the law because that is where the application of the law is really tested third and most important i think it is important to look at principles doctrines that law has evolved as is applicable in a particular case for example if you pick up environmental law you have several principles like the absolute liability principle the polluter pay principle so you then use those principles as tool to bring about a proper answer you could also look at various rules regulations notifications circulars bylaws we generally call them as delegated legislation as to substantiate your answer now all of these friends are very very important and crucial as to bring in the content of your answer 
very often candidates have come up to us and said sir when you say decide in a problem based question as per your key i have decided correctly i have decided in favor of a against b but the real crux of your answer is not on your final decision but on how you arrive at that final decision what is the rule that you have applied has the rule been applied on proper identification of the issues has there been proper analysis of the rule as to the application to the problem and hence unless you do this even if you have come to the correct conclusion you may not actually get adequate marks because the conclusion will only fetch you 20 percentage of the marking criteria 80 percent is on how you arrive to that particular conclusion and hence kindly focus on the legal analysis in the paper not on the general logical analysis it is important that uh, candidates not only look at getting 50% in the distant education examination lot of candidates have cleared the mbl paper but have not been able to register for the phd program at the national law school because the phd program at the national law school would require the mbl graduate to get above 55% or a cgpa of at least 4 and hence while you are attempting to clear these papers i think your attempt must be on achieving that 55 percentage of marks thereby giving a value to the degree that has been awarded by the national law school of india university let me add one other issue as in relation to the diploma candidates the diploma candidates will submit dissertation we have unfortunately found many dissertations not up to the quality the dissertations have not been cleared and the candidate has been asked to resubmit the dissertation the candidate may resubmit the dissertation either on the same topic or on a new topic but for the same the approval of the department is essential and mandatory please note apart from resubmitting the dissertation you ought to reappear for the viva and this is now a mandatory rule as guided by the distant education committee kindly prepare your dissertation very carefully it should be a substantial thesis it can be as dynamic of coverage of photographs it can have empirical data it could have real time data it could have data from your industry experience it could have analysis of the problem issues and challenges that confront that area but i think more importantly don't lose the focus on the dissertation that unless and until you discuss law as applicable to the title of your dissertation your dissertation is not complete please be aware of issues of plagiarism and honesty in writing the dissertation if any candidate is found to have cut copied paste without proper acknowledgement of the source of the material the dissertation may be liable to be rejected and the candidate's declaration of results may be held to be null and void and hence even if the dissertation is not as big in terms of the quantity of pages i think whatever is submitted must be an original work of the candidate and we expect the candidate to sign a declaration form that this dissertation is an original work of the candidate and has not been submitted for any degree or diploma to any other university before it is being submitted to the national law school of india university the dissertation carries a mark of 80 while the viva is for 20 marks and hence overall the candidate ought to get 50 percentage of that particular mark in dissertation friends the distant education department is proud to conduct the examination in over four centers across the country with large number of students taking the examination the effort of the distant education department would always be to declare the examination as early as possible but you ought to see the numbers you ought to see the kind of effort that is being put in the declaration of results and hence we would ensure that the results are declared whenever at whatever stage as early as possible the team in the national law school would wish every distant education scholar all the very best for the examination 
and uh, we wish you success.